Red Hook's a really interesting and unique neighborhood in New York because uh, it has a really small population. It's only about 10,000 people. So in a way, it's like a small town in Ohio or small town in the South. But then it has this benefit of being right next to the biggest city in the country. And so as far as the amount of impact that you can have on a community, um, it's got two really important sides. One is that the community is small enough so that um, in a few years you can really start to get to know uh, everyone who's interested in technology. There can be kind of a small scene that, that can develop in it pretty easily. Uh, and also because it's right next to New York where all, a lot of really incredible technology jobs are, um, there are a lot of opportunities for, for teaching stuff that uh, enables people to, to sort of move on to, to positions at, at really great, exciting companies. Panerics is a center for art, community interaction, education, technology. It's a nonprofit that started in 2012 and now we've got year-round events that involve technology or that involve lectures and exhibitions that aim to make it easier for artists or members of the community to get involved in technology, learn how to use different tools that, particularly for artists, make up the new paintbrush. The idea of this boat race came from the history of the neighborhood. So this neighborhood was a major shipping port when the Dutch were in New York. From that time up until the 50s, it was the major shipping port for New York City. Uh, and in the 50s, when containerization came in in the shipping industry, uh, the number of jobs, shipping jobs in Red Hook went from 10,000 jobs to 500 jobs. So the, the landscape, the economic landscape of the neighborhood changed completely in the 50s, and it was all tied into the waterfront and the shipping industry. This race pays homage to that history. So the idea was to use the regatta to focus on the history of the neighborhood, learn more about where we live, and try to think about the, the water in different ways, and our geography in different ways. The idea was to make a 3D printed boat race, because there weren't any, and we knew that by doing that, we would get people to pay attention to the race in a way that they wouldn't if it were just a boat race. Just kind of capitalizing on the sort of fattiness of 3D printing, but then to use the 3D printing itself as a tool for teaching 3D modeling and for teaching physics and learning about learning about how things work when you go from the digital world to the physical world, that translation is really complicated. There was no really clear way to make it happen, so we started working with the, the Digital Stewards, which is a program in, in Red Hook that provides tech training and internship placement for young adults 18 to 24. I want my boat to be the fastest. I work for Digital Stewards and I'm making a boat for the boat race that we're gonna have soon. I really like this experience. I never used 3D printing, so for the first time, I really like it. I like learning hands-on. The hardest part is trying to make sure that you create something that's gonna actually come out of the 3D printer because you gotta make sure that every end point is closed off and everything is connected because if not, if there's a hole, it may not complete. You gotta understand what the 3D printer can create. So you gotta know its limits. I wanna be able to create stuff like visually, like art, kinda like art how they do it here, but using computers, using tech. My dream job is in the designer field, designing media, that's what I do at Digital Stewards. If it was available, I would have a job doing 3D printing. It depends on how your mind works and if you can produce it. What happens if you there? 3D printing has become essential here in a lot of stuff we, that we do. There are a lot of creative people here who like to build stuff and create stuff, and so the idea that we could make parts and make little additions to or making custom in-house was like total game changer and we used to get questions I remember early on I still get these questions a lot they're like wow 3d printing is so cool I'm really excited to see what's gonna happen with it and what people are gonna eventually figure out what to use it for I like to say like we're using it we're using it all the time and there is no let's see where it goes the, the stuff that we're using it for we can't do any other way and so making small parts and 
um, making custom stuff is, is something that we couldn't do before, or we could do before, with like a hacksaw and a piece of aluminum and a hammer. And now this replaces it, and the beauty of it is with the hacksaw and the hammer, you make it once, and you're like, okay, let's start over and make another. With a 3D printer, you just push play again, and you have another. And so anytime you want to replicate stuff, and um, it's, it's just been essential, in addition to the building of the boats, which is the whole idea of the race, the making small parts and mounts and things like that quickly to, to solve problems is just so essential, and those are not the prototypes. Those are the actual part. This printer can be used to make an event like this that turns the entire city onto rapid prototyping. This idea of you can make something really sophisticated in this little square factory that you have. Unless you're in this sort of fabrication industry, you don't really know that 3D printers are already super essential part of your workflow. They're, they're essential. I mean, here it's essential. I mean, we lean on these machines really hard. I mean, last race worked the gigabyte into the ground. I mean, we, we put that thing through so much. You know, in 10 days, uh, there were probably a few hours that it wasn't running. It was cranking stuff out. It's been an awesome machine. The idea that you can build something that big is, is not something that you'd ever expect to be able to have in your studio. The race itself is your shipping stuff. Stevedores, who are the, the traditional workers in this neighborhood, the boat loaders, in our race, load the boats with these cargo bricks, which are just foam bricks, onto the boats. They send them out from the beach out to our shipping port, which is three of our volunteers with cranes, which are fishing rods with big red hooks with magnets on them. Uh, and we pick up the bricks uh, through a piece of metal on the brick. Uh, up to the pier. And if you do that, you score a point, and whoever scores the most points in 15 minutes wins. Let's